Hey, I'm Emilio. I'm the deputy editor of The Unshackled. I'm here with Tim Wilms, the editor-in-chief, and we're going to be conducting some interviews with the attendees of this event. You're a fucking Nazi! I am here with Dia of El Dia Opina. We're here with George. Alex. At Alex Yeshkovich. That last name is J A S K I E W I C Z. Ticket holder at uh, Darren. We've got uh, Kim and we've got Tash. And she is going to tell us why she thinks that this event is important and why she's attending. Dia, give us a little bit about what you're thinking. Um, I think this event is important because it is just a tiny little um, ripple in the water as, as for what our country needs to hear regarding free speech, what our country needs to hear about um, that it's okay to be white. All of these uh, things that are deemed um, by leftist society to not be okay needs to be heard because um, that part of the media, that part of our mentality and education gets shielded. I think it's uh, it's getting to a point where you know people need to open up. And, I mean, I, I've actually only really become interested in politics at all in the last 12, 18 months. Uh, um, mostly after Donald Trump's election, election, yeah, and you know you start to see the um, the the people on the left. They just there's but they got no argument. You know, they just shout slogans. They're not interested in debate. I mean, we're getting. I know a lot of people like myself are getting pretty desperate trying to get people to just have a conversation with us. Not an argument, no bickering, no gotchas. Just an honest, genuine conversation. But. They're so far gone that they've discounted even the possibility that they could be wrong. I mean, I think I'm correct, but I don't think it's impossible for me to be wrong. If I am wrong, I want to know, but they've discounted even the possibility. And what do you think about the fact, I don't know if you're aware, but this is a venue that, that was something like the 17th or 18th venue that they found because they kept either getting turned away yeah. or they, uh, there were uh, people who would say that they would come over and basically assault anyone so they had to change the venue. So what, 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 does, that, uh, what does that make you feel? What does that make you think? Well, it, it certainly doesn't show an open opinion of, of things, does it? Uh, and I was, I was actually really surprised that there was so much, I was only reading about it uh, today or yesterday, that there was so much pushback from the left for this event. I, I really. Milo, I can kind of understand because he's, you know, he's a bit more out there, he's a bit more flamboyant. But uh, these guys, Lauren and, and Stefan, are much more, uh, yeah, calm, logical. You know, the, the, it, it, and probably maybe a bit more approachable. And, and um, yeah, so I was, re I was really quite surprised to hear that there was so much push. But you know, I can understand it too. It's, you know, you, you don't want. Yeah, we're all we've all paid money to come and see and, and listen. You know, what right do they have to stop us from doing that? To having an opinion and listening to someone talk. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. No, the, the that opposing opinions would somehow be some something that is worthy of being shut down is ridiculous. Alex, thank you so much for talking no to us. Thanks very much. Uh, Peter, I I take it that you're uh, very much into President Donald Trump of the United States. Just a little uh, bit. Yeah, yeah. No, it wasn't subtle. But I guess on your way in, uh, you got called a name. You got heckled. Do you want to tell us a bit about that? Yeah. As we were walking in from the bus, or uh, people were screaming at us, calling us rodents, and basically flipping us off as we were walking down. Which I find it quite funny, actually, because it's kind of sad. And, uh, Basically, just because you uh, you are uh, a person who agrees with a political figure yeah. that uh, that someone else doesn't agree with, and that's basically the the really important part of this event. Yes. Uh, it's it's a defense of freedom of speech. It's a defense of basically being able to make your mind heard. Yeah. So, why do you think that this is important now for Australia? It's important because you want everyone to get their views up, uh, across. Because if you're constantly shutting down people on one side that's trying to get their views out, then you only have one side always talking and then everyone thinks it's one thing. Whereas if everybody's saying how they should, how it should be, it would make, uh, everyone could learn different opinions and stuff and make their own mind up instead of, you know, like universities, you go there and they basically cram down your throat all what the teachers believe instead of giving them an uh, option of learning about multiple things. So then they only have one mindset when they leave rather than saying, hey, here's a whole different things you could do and think about. And then, then they can actually think about it and go, oh, actually, I don't actually agree with this. I can go to here. So it's very important because um, it lets everyone 
know what you think and how people can make up their mind because a lot of uh, choices that you make it happened because people uh, persuade you in that way. So if you shut down one person trying to say something and then one other person saying everything, you only have one view of the world. So okay. it's good for everyone to have a broad range. Of and do you think that maybe we ever, uh, well not we, I'm not a Trump supporter myself, but do you think that maybe some conservatives and some people that are uh, Trump supporters, conservatives, maybe they fall into the same trap of deeming anyone to no that doesn't think like them, uh, maybe maybe not as extreme as a Nazi or something, but basically deeming them to be unintelligent or un unevolved. Uh, yeah, uh, they, they, they think that our side, the conservative side, is idiots, basically, because we don't know what we're talking about and stuff, whereas the left is very, very filled with false facts and they try to shove it in your throat. So uh, well, I'm more here for Lauren, and I just like how she kind of kind of just speaks her mind and no matter what people say or or do to her she'll still keep up with her beliefs and she'll still fight for what she thinks is right yeah she is she's very brave getting out on the streets all the time yeah. I'm not sure if you saw yesterday she asked Melburnians do you want to kill me yeah I did see that I thought it was quite funny some of them said yeah or not yeah but some of them kind of you know, said, oh, I don't think she should be speaking, and they didn't even know she was right there in front of her. So I thought that was quite ironic almost, yeah. Uh, now, tell us a bit about your politics, because obviously tonight you're wearing your Make America Great Again cap uh, proudly, so obviously yeah. you're a big... Yeah, well, um, I kind of... I'm not, like, super into it like some people, um, but I do kind of like to think that people should stick up for what they think is right. Um, I, I'm a big believer in fighting for what you think is right. Um, and I try and just do the same. I'm also a big believer in free speech. So I'll try and kind of, obviously to an extent, you know, I won't go around saying things that are overly offensive, but I'll try and just, you know, as I said before, say things that I think are right. And if someone tries to say, well, you can't say that, and I think it's reasonable. I'll fight for what I think I should say. Was there any trouble getting here? Not really, just the usual drongos at the uh, Broadmeadows station. Yeah. Yeah. No. Oh, no, it's fine. I mean, it's a bit inconvenient when you don't know the location because we probably could have driven here, but because we found, like, I was with my brothers, and my brothers are here somewhere, and because of, we didn't know where the plans were, so. We realise now where it is. We probably could have just driven there and saved us like half an hour. But other than that, it's fine. Now, what made you want to come tonight? Obviously, Lauren Southern and Stefan Molyneux are big internet uh, sensations. Uh, uh, what, what's attracted you to their ideas? I just agree with them. With what she's got to say. Yeah. Uh, so, I'm just really interested in all ideas generally. Like, I love anything and I love I love hearing opposing opinions. I'm very much into free speech, and especially Lauren Southerns. I know more about her, and I really admire some of her work, uh, especially when she travels like Africa. And she really she puts herself on the line. And I might not agree with everything she does, but I'm really I just find like she's such a good example of a strong female role model, and she's willing to put also her social structure on the line. And I just admire her. As, a human being and I'm really interested to hear more about it, really interested to hear more about the documentary. Um, yeah, so. Uh, so I might ask you both as women, you don't find her or as Stefan's views are misogynistic or anything like that? No, they're just, see I am older and Australia's changed. Uh, my grandfather was actually at Gallipoli and back then, years and years ago, Australians might have been vote Liberal Labor, but we we're all on the same side. Now it's really divided. It's just divided and Australians are going against their own culture and um, siding with others from other cultures against their own. So, so no, I wouldn't say that. I mean, she's a great example of a strong, independent female. And I think that sometimes the way that a lot of uh, certain political people right now, they do tend to say things that are, I guess, more controversial. When you really listen into their point of views and really get down to it, a lot of them aren't misogynist. They're not putting down female rights. They're not, they're not putting one gender above the other. I think it's very important to keep balance that way. 
obviously I don't agree with absolutely everything, but I'm very much for, I guess, more classical feminism in terms of gender equality. And so I think she's a perfect example of a strong female. Yeah. Hey, can you explain your, your shirt? I haven't seen it before. Stop the culture of victimhood. Well, I think the, one of the biggest problems our society has these days is people are too busy being a victim and we're too busy making victims rather than empowering people to take control of their own life. Oh, well, it's easy for you to say as a cis white male with a Trump hat on. I am truly evil. Um, everything is my fault and I should get nothing. <laughs> now, obviously you're here because you're a fan of uh, Lauren Southern and Stefan Molyneux. How did you come across their work? Obviously they're big uh, sensations. Look, I, I've, I've always followed like Milo Yiannopoulos um, and a lot, lot of other really good right-wing conservative commentators. And you know, when you sort of look look for information to be enlightened, you come across good people, and that's how I found them. And obviously, the the, the left they tried to make sure tonight's event uh, didn't happen, but we all got here. It's happening, as uh, we can see here. There's people all around us, so everyone's pretty excited. I think it's fantastic. I was a little disappointed at the Milo concert. We, you know, we had all sorts of things hurled at us. I thought they would have been more here, but I think they all ended up at Broadmeadows train station, and um, they don't drive. He's wearing uh, what has been deemed to be some kind of white supremacist image. Yes. Can yeah. you explain to us why that isn't so, and why you're wearing the pin? Well, Pepe was literally just a cartoon frog. It's like. It's like using Homer Simpson as a symbol of the Fourth Reich rising. Like it was literally just a cartoon frog, but um, it sort of became a caricature of itself because a lot of people believed it was something it wasn't. And then everybody went, well, you know what? If it's going to wind them up, let's do it. <laughs> you know, it was just red flag at a ball. It's like saying, whatever you do, don't do that thing. And so that is exactly what everybody does. And that's how you end up with a cartoon frog being the modern day equivalent of a swastika armband, apparently. Yeah. yeah, no, it's unbelievable that there are a bunch of grown ass men that will find it completely abhorrent for you to wear a caricature on your arm. And we have some of those uh, triggered gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> we have some of those triggered gentlemen outside. Uh, obviously, this is one of many. Um, many venues that were looked at but were not able to hold Lauren and Stefan because it was just too dangerous. What, what do you think about that? What do you think about the shutdown culture and the Antifa culture? Well the problem with the symbolism is that you can't, you can't convince them otherwise. Um, they're utterly convinced of a lot of things that are absolutely false but the really sad reality is that I mean, and this is, the, this is something I want to ask Stefan if I can, is I mean what do you do when argument fails and by that I mean how do you convince someone if they lack the mental faculties to understand what you're saying to them? <laughs> like, it doesn't matter what you say to these people, there's nothing will ever convince them otherwise. They're utterly convinced this is the new swastika <laughs> and nothing will ever change it. And so, when someone's that unhinged and that just completely off the rails, which they are, you know, an argument fails, what is really left? That's the really, really depressing and probably the the core question of our time, I would say, because, you know, that was the old saying, the only cure for communism is a bullet. And the, but it sounds facetious, but the reality is if someone really is that unhinged, they are beyond talking out of their position. And so you're, what, what option are you left with, really? That's the really frightening thing. That's my real number one concern with everything that's going on. Right, absolutely. You yeah, know, and I think, I mean, sometimes, you know, if people are not willing to hear reason, then you know you can't really convince them. Why convince them? But it's good to put up the good fight that's, and make sure that people don't fall into beyond it. debates. Um.